Hey guys, welcome back. So today I wanted to do a quick video talking about the magazine compatibility with the new Bren 805 pistol. When I posted my first video, a lot of you guys had the question, what magazines does the 805 like? What will it work with? And that's a good question, but I wanted to make a dedicated video about it for future reference. And that's what we're gonna do this afternoon. Also, this is obviously the non-braced version. CZ saw my original video, contacted me and asked if I would like to try out one of the brace systems. Well, how can you say no to that? They sent out this adapter, which you see here, and a tube is part of the kit that they, I believe they're gonna be offering for sale if it isn't already for sale on their website. The actual SIG brace that you see on the end here, this was mine already. Now, of course, the brace is designed to be used with your arm. It's meant to stabilize the handgun when you fire it with just one hand. But let's also talk briefly about the legality of using the brace because I know a lot of you guys out there kind of freak out when you start talking about braces because of the ATF's determination letter that they released just before SHOT Show this year. So let's just talk about it now. The ATF told everybody in attendance at SHOT Show, which took place the week after they released their determination letter, which by the way, isn't a change in any laws, it's just a change in the way that the ATF interprets the law. They determined that if you shoulder the brace, put it in your shoulder, and fire it that you're basically changing it from a pistol to a rifle, to back to a pistol, back to a rifle, or short barreled rifle if it's on a pistol, simply by the way that you use it. Now I think the ATF as, rest, uh, as well as the rest of the civilized world probably knows that that's pretty much unenforceable. And they said as much when they were meeting with the press and SIG's attorneys and other folks at SHOT Show. What the ATF said from their own lips was that they don't really anticipate enforcing the law if just casual shooters happen to go out and put the brace against their shoulder and fire their gun. I can't think of anybody, as a matter of fact, that has been arrested or prosecuted for firing a braced pistol while touching it to their shoulder. And there's been any number of YouTubers out there that have been quite vocal about it, saying that it's not a law, they can't prosecute you, and posting videos of themselves shouldering the brace and even shooting it. And to my knowledge, none of them have been arrested, much less prosecuted, and certainly haven't done any prison time. What the ATF has said is that if you use a braced pistol in the commission of a crime, they may throw the charge at you, kind of like how law enforcement does. They'll throw a bunch of charges at you and hope something sticks. If you go out and rob a bank with a braced pistol and you, you shoot it from the, the shoulder or you hold it to your shoulder, they can come at you with another you know, charge to throw against you saying that you violated the NFA. And they said they pretty much want to use it for that purpose, to charge people that are already committing other crimes that may be using a braced pistol. But to my knowledge, I've never seen anything in the media saying that somebody's used a braced pistol in a crime. So it seems to be kind of a non-starter from the very beginning, but regardless, that's what the ATF has talked about. Also, if you're dumb enough to go on social media or run it up the flagpole that, hey, look, I'm trying to circumvent the NFA laws. I want to take a pistol and make it into an, an SBR without paying my $200 tax. And then you go out and you put it together and post pictures of it and you know, video all over the internet. Well, you might actually get prosecuted for that because the ATF says if you're attempting to circumvent the NFA laws, they may come after you for that one as well. Now, how did all this come about? It came about where the ATF initially said they didn't care. They actually released a termination letter saying they didn't care if you put the thing in your shoulder or not, but people kept writing letters. Lots and lots of stupid letters asking stupid questions. And even on my Facebook page, I implored you guys to stop writing stupid letters to the ATF asking, well, is it okay if you put it on an AK because it was originally designed for an AR-15? Or can I take this short barreled shotgun and put it on there? And can I do it? And all these stupid questions that the ATF ultimately had to answer. And what did you expect them to say? The NFA, we're not gonna enforce it? Or no, you can't do that. Well, they opted to say, no, you can't do that. Now, I don't agree with the NFA. I think it's unconstitutional, but as long as it's, it's the law of the land, being a responsible gun owner myself and a fairly prominent YouTuber, I am going to abide by those laws. Shouldering the brace isn't gonna get you in trouble if you're just a casual shooter, you're out shooting it, and it just happens to touch your shoulder if your intent wasn't to circumvent the NFA laws and if you're not out committing felonies with your braced pistol. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at the Breno 805 and see how it performs with a variety of different magazines. Real quick, let me show you how to put the brace on the Breno 805. Take the pen out first. Then push the button, take the end cap off. Like that. Take the brace 
and its adapter. It's just going to slide right on in place of the factory end cap. Put your pin back in, and you have a braced pistol. All right, guys, so I have a whole bag full of magazines that I want to try out in the Bren. Starting off, I'm going to do the X products, 50 round drum. Love these drums, really outstanding products. I hope the pistol works with the drum. Then I have a hex mag. These are relatively new on the market. We'll see how the pistol likes that. And this looks like an old Lancer magazine. You can tell by the feed lips. It's an older generation. USGI, this is what the gun ships with, but I just grabbed another one. This is just a generic military contract magazine. Give it a shot. Here's a second generation PMAG windowed. All right, no shelf. Give it a shot. Here's a third generation PMAG with the shelf. Some guns, like the Brita ARX100, don't like it. We'll find out if the Bryn does. And here we have a Lancer 5 mag. All right, current production. And last but not least, a Troy Industries Battle Mag. So let's see how the Bryn does with these mags. For our test this afternoon, we will be using ZQI M855 ball ammunition, which is NATO spec, so we shouldn't have any functional issues related to the ammunition. In no particular order, I'm just going to start grabbing magazines out of the bag and putting them into the gun. Each magazine is loaded with 15 rounds of the ZQI ammo. I'm going to start off with the X Products drum. All right. No problems there. Does not lock open normally on the X Products drum. All right, I grabbed out the second generation P mag with the window, 15 rounds. Again, of M855 ball. Locks open okay. All right, no problems with the P mag, Gen 2. All right, got a Lancer. Stick a Lancer in there. 15 rounds. Locks open, no problems. And let's see, yeah. as luck would have it, the other Lancer, slightly different feed lips. Okay, it did not, oh, it closed. All right, here we go. Locks open, no problems. Drops right out. All the magazines seem to drop right out of the gun. USGI, military contract magazine. That was interesting. Pushed the magazine in, the bolt went closed automatically. Yeah, picked up around. All right. Whew, I will tell you, that muzzle brake is ferocious. All right, no problems with the USGI. And. All right, third generation PMAG with the shelf. Inserts, locks in. Looks like it fed. All right, locks open. Now, I will say that this thing is getting pretty darn hot. One of the downsides to this particular firearm design is that it's all metal up here and it's getting warm. All right, two magazines left. Got the Troy Battle Mag, 15 rounds ZQI. All right, doesn't appear to have locked open. Let's give it a second, the gun's hot. Really hot. <laughs> All right, it just simply doesn't lock open on the Troy Battle Mag. All right, so. One problem discovered, last but not least, the hex mag. Make sure it's seated. And locks open just fine. All right. I would say with the exception of the Troy magazine, it's 100% success. Seems to run just fine 
I'll take a closer look at the Troy magazine. I have a few more at the house. We'll try them out, see if I can get it to lock open or not. It may be a problem with that single magazine. It did feed fine, just did not lock open. And again, this thing is scorching hot, uncomfortably so. Wow. Let's also point out one other thing while I have your attention here. You'll notice on the mount or the uh, the adapter here for the Sig brace, it has QD mounts. Something that was overlooked in the original design in this adapter that they've made. They've put QD mounts back here, which is nice. So I've had the chance to put quite a bit of ammunition through the 805 since I first picked it up, and we've put you know quite a bit more through it this afternoon. And the gun seems to be functioning just fine. It definitely has some quirks, though. Uh, one of the things I noticed in my original video, a lot of guys from the Czech Republic, including some military guys, were really talking down on the 805. Uh, it seems to be a big political thing going on over there with regards to the adoption of the 805 in the Czech military. The VZ-58 apparently is a much-loved rifle over there, and this little interloper seems to have uh, ruffled some feathers, and there's quite a few complaints about the gun being adopted with never being formally tested. Uh, it, they claim that it's just a, a cheap knockoff of the SCAR. All this stuff I'm seeing comments-wise in the video, which I thought to be interesting. Now, my personal take, I, don't, I can't take all that into consideration when I'm evaluating a firearm. All I can do is evaluate the firearm based upon my own experiences with it. So far, the gun's been 100% reliable. Now, I don't like the fact that, first of all, it's all metal up here and it gets hot. Okay, so that's kind of a detractor. Because it is a pistol in its current form, I can't put a vertical grip up there and get my hand away from that metal. I could do an AFG. It's kind of one of those gray areas. The ATF is notorious for issuing conflicting letters, so you never know if somebody gets a letter written to them saying something is okay, they may write a letter to somebody else the following week that gives a completely different interpretation of the law as they see it. So I just opt to play it safe and I don't put anything on there, but you could. You could also put some 1913 rail protectors on the bottom here and try to get your hand away from it or hold it by the magazine. If you're gonna do that, I would recommend moving the charging handle over to the other side if you're a right-handed shooter so you don't stick your thumb up there and get it whacked by that reciprocating charging handle. The only other thing I can really say that I don't like about the gun is the fact that its bolt hold open is pretty much next to useless and it doesn't have a way to release the bolt without having to hit the charging handle. If you're gonna have a bolt stop, you might as well have a bolt release, and it doesn't have one of those. Other than that, and the fact you can't take the bolt out of the carrier, which is a completely crazy thing in my mind, um, other than that, the gun works great. It's a pleasure to shoot. I will say it is heavy. I mean, if this were an SBR, which I intend to SBR it at some point, uh, if it were an SBR, holy cow, that thing would be incredibly heavy. I mean, oh no, it touched my shoulder. Um, but I mean, it would be incredibly nose heavy as a rifle, as a pistol. It's not so much uh, of, of a concern because you can't put that hand out there, of course, until it gets too hot to handle. So overall, I'm still enjoying the gun. I am very happy with the purchase so far. I'm looking forward to doing some accuracy tests with it and stuff like that. That will come in a later video. Right now, we're just focusing on the magazine reliability and functionality. I hope you guys enjoyed the magazine compatibility test with the Bren 805 pistol. As we discovered, it seems that the pistol works just fine with any number of commercial magazines that are out there. P mags, USGI, hex mags. The Troy mags work. Might be a problem with them locking open. I'll further explore that later. Uh, Lancer magazines, all that stuff seems to work just fine, including my personal favorite, the X Products 50 Round Drum Magazine. Very good news on that front. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash military arms. Also, please come by and check out Copper Custom. That's our online store. If you want to support the Military Arms channel, it's the best possible way. Swing by, check it out. A lot of great products at great prices. And if you haven't already, please check out full30.com. That's full30.com. It's an online community of gun enthusiasts where the web's best content creators are featured. Swing by, support the Second Amendment gun community by watching videos on full30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.